Hey guys, welcome to the Financial Bunny TV. My name is Nicolette Mashile. I'm also known as That Financial Bunny. So today we're talking a little bit about how do you improve your credit score. But I think it's also important to remember that improving your credit score doesn't really help you if you don't maintain it. So the same tips that I'm going to be giving you that actually improve your credit score will ultimately also maintain your credit score. Now remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to some Somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA to be able to give you any type of financial advice. You may also want to contact a debt counselor or a registered debt counselor. Now, if you've read my book, one of the chapters talks a little bit about how I ended up in jail. Okay, I mean, if you want the full story, buy the book and then you will know. But one of the lessons that I learned from being in jail, I got um, arrested and i was in a holding cell in randberg and one of the girls that i found in that holding cell had been there for a week man this girl had even created a washing line for her panties her vest lap she had made it home and i was just like yo my sister i don't even want to be here for another minute and when are you so comfortable so anyway um and i asked her so what are you in for and she said to me she was in for fraud so i said okay Spill the tea, Musadi. What type of fraud does a young woman, a young respectable woman like you get involved in? And she actually said they were getting into credit agreement fraud. Basically, what they were doing is they would go to people's dustbins and they would dig up all letters or documents statements, anything that would have your information on it. It would have your full name, it would have your ID number, your address, and sometimes it would even have your banking details. And what they would do is they would use that in a credit um, 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 shop. Let's say, for instance, they would go to a Vodacom shop to go and buy a cell phone under your name, and then they would buy those uh, 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 gadgets, and then they would go and sell them for a profit later on to other people. And then only a couple of months later, do you start realizing that you are getting statements from somewhere and you're like, but I didn't walk into the shop. Kanti, it's because somebody used your details to open a, a, a credit agreement account or whatever. So that's how they got caught. Somehow somebody alerted the credit provider that they went into that day. Lights came. <laughs> the police came and arrested a baby girl, right? So that kind of reminded me of some of the things that we take for granted that a lot of us do on a daily basis that could potentially hurt our credit profile. I think more than finding out that you have to pay for an account that is not yours, that is annoying. But finding out that your credit report has been ruined or your credit score has been ruined because of something that you didn't even actually get that is just something else and that's generally what happens in fact i was having a conversation um with a lady that worked at african bank and we're talking about i was telling her the story about when i got arrested this is before i wrote the book so i was just telling her do you think it's a good idea to put the story in the book and she was like no put it in she actually um she lived in the south and somebody did the same thing to her they opened an account at truett's somewhere in one of the truett's in uh, the shopping centers in the uh, north of pretoria i think and these people were buying, they were buying Jewish. They were buying DH skin, Daniel Hatcher. They were buying, what is that other one? That other brand, man, you go through it. I keep forgetting it. But they were buying all those expensive things under her name. And then she eventually got to the police to say, guys, there's an account that's open in my name. It's not mine. Um, how do I fix this? Because it had been in arrears for almost three months. Um, so she, she did everything that she's supposed to do. She submitted the affidavits and all that stuff to get herself clear to say, I really am not the person that went to open these accounts. While that was okay and fair, and she got cleared as the person who didn't open those accounts, it took months to be able to clear her credit score. Because remember, the credit score system is a system. It is not a human being. It's a system that uses a certain algorithm. And the algorithm are the tips that I'm about to give you that if you just try and fix those things, that in its own will actually improve your credit score. The first one, you must remember what happens is that you go to a credit provider to go and open a credit application um, or a credit agreement account. 
then they give you a credit agreement what they then do is they then report to the credit bureaus about your credit behavior which ultimately is what makes up your score that's the algorithm that actually makes up your score right so it's about do you abide are you sticking to the credit agreement t's and c's what are those t's and c's the first one is you have agreed to pay back a certain amount of money it's called the minimum monthly repayment you've agreed to pay that amount of money every single month and you've agreed to pay it on a specific date those two things are very important because often what people do is that they either pay less than what they have agreed to pay or they pay late sometimes it's not your fault sometimes your salary comes in on the wrong day however the debit order goes off in a specific date so the system expects money to be paid to service a certain credit agreement on a specific date if you miss that what ultimately happens is that you have missed an agreed upon date so the system then puts their unpaid unpaid is part of the algorithm that is going to mess up your credit score so unpaid late payments those are very important also the amount if you have agreed to pay 200 rand to your credit account you've got to make sure that the minimum payment of 200 rand is made every single month you can't decide this month yo la lela sneakers as a part so nizo patala 100 rand this month uuting is a no you can't do that it does not work like that because you have signed a contract that says you will pay a certain amount of money on a certain day so step number one is to ensure that you pay the minimum amount uh, monthly repayment and you pay it on the date that you stipulated that you would pay it on the second thing you've got to understand is what we call credit utilization i use a bucket to explain credit utilization right let's say for instance you are given a bucket and then there is a bunch of money that's on the floor and what you've got to do is to fill your bucket with this money right if you fill it to the brim you look like somebody that is dependent on the money on the floor if you only fill it up halfway you look like somebody that doesn't really need the money on the floor you're just like mm, i'm okay with not having all this money that's on the floor so technically credit utilization is how much of the credit limit that you have been granted do you use so a lot of us what we do the biggest mistake that a lot of us make to screw up the algorithm is that let's say for instance unali a clothing account ne? they're by jet stores jet gives you a clothing account they say to you you're buying power i know they call it buying power so it's not credit limit it's the same thing but it's not credit limit they call it buying power if buying power yeah call is four thousand rand so you can buy for four thousand rand you then go and buy for the whole four thousand rand ah ah that shows that you are dependent on credit same thing that happens on a credit card they give you a spending limit on your credit card let's say your spending limit on your credit card is ten thousand rand every month every month when i poo, you're finishing that ten thousand you look like somebody that is dependent on using credit to be able to facilitate and operate their life so the and i would say the benchmark or the 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 the, the, the industry whatever benchmark is that you only use 50 percent of your credit limit to show that you know what sometimes i can use credit but i don't really need it all together so that's what credit utilization is about i know a lot of people want to max out their credit cards and they just like ooh, ooh, ooh. no it's actually bad to max out your credit card so my suggestion i always tell people is instead of using your credit card or your debit card rather take money from your debit card transfer it to your credit card and use your credit card you will increase the limit however you only use half of that limit that now starts to show that you are actually not dependent on credit what other people do to try and cheat the system is that instead of going for a 10,000 rand limit if it allows they go to 15,000 rand but they only use 10,000 rand of their limit now this takes a lot of discipline because i know all of a sudden now that you've got 15,000 rand credit limit you want to use the entire 15,000 rand ah uh ah -uh. bopa ipondo urlexe you only are supposed to use 50 percent of your credit utilization the next one is a bit sketchy and a bit different but basically remember 
your credit score let me use a report and i think I've, I've used this example before when you get to grade 10 they tell you to choose subjects now if you did not do well in mathematics you are not going to choose mathematics to go into grade 10 with i don't care if you want to be a doctor you are not great at math unless you get a tutor of course and that's a different conversation or you could alternatively go into math lit nah. I'm digressing. But ultimately what it is, is that if you do not have exp- Okay, maybe the, the report thing is very is not a good uh, example. Let's use you wanting to go into a job. And they look at your job experience. And you want to go into, let's say for instance, you want to be a social media manager. You don't even have a social media account. You don't, you've never managed a social media account. In fact, you've never worked in a media agency. Eh? But you want to manage social media accounts for clients. Now they're going to look at you and think, ah, while you may have job experience, your job experience is not for the job that you are currently trying to get. Some people may take the risk and give you the job and risk the fact that you might not be great at your job. But when it comes to credit, most credit providers do not take that risk because they're not trying to have a default and they've got to now chase you down the road into court to try and prove that you have defaulted and then trying to get their money. Most credit providers want to make sure that they will always get their money, which is why they do an affordability check and they do a credit check. Now, when we talk about a different types of credit or having a different type or having a credit mix, we're talking about you having different type of credit let's say for instance you want to get a home loan right you need to make sure that you've got different type of credit mixes some of them need to be long-term credit some of them need to be short-term credit so that the credit provider can see that yeah maybe you are really good at the 12 month type of credit but this is going to be either a 15 20 30 year bond what if you cannot commit to it so these are the kind of things that they are going to be looking into so you've got to have different credit facilities but this does not mean go out and get credit willy nilly yeah, for the sake of getting credit to try and have different types of credit mixes. Use credit only if you need it because remember, you pay for credit. The fourth thing to remember is the credit inquiries. And I know it confuses people a lot. And the example I always use is when people are shopping for a car. Most people shop for a car with no intention to really buy a car, right? By the time you actually want to buy a car, you kind of already know which car you're buying. But on that specific day, you may not have an intention to actually put in a credit application. But what happens with a lot of people and a lot of sites, these are very, very naughty sites. What they do is that they've got a little box that says, check here for a consent here for a credit check. Basically, every time you do that, so for them, let's just put it this way. Let's look at it from one direction. For the, for the site, if you consent to that, you become a hot lead if you have the credit access to be able to buy a car. Then they move you to the person who is selling the car. You become what is called a hot lead. But if you do not, you will see that won't, if you don't qualify, they won't even prioritize you. You're not going to get those emails every week to say, hey, 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 buy a car, buy a car, buy a car, buy a car. But when you're a hot lead and you've got actually credit access, they will tell you everything. Buy a car, buy a car, buy a car, buy a car, buy a car. They'll keep reminding you to buy a car. But ultimately, on your side, when you consent to a credit check, it is considered a hard inquiry or a hard credit check inquiry. It is considered an inquiry for the purpose of credit. So if you do those almost every single week, the system doesn't know that when you are just checking. Now to the system, you look like somebody that's always needing credit. And now we're just like, ah. Can't you know now, you're a liar. Oh, you a credit. You're always using credit. Or you're always looking for credit. And this does not always bide well for you. The other type of inquiries, because it happens sometimes, you're looking for a job and the credit provider or the, the job, the, the HR says to you, we need a copy of your credit. Then they will go and actually pull a credit report. Or you, because you want to manage your finances, you want good money management, you would do it yourself. Now, because the purpose of you pulling the credit report is not for credit purposes, it's not for credit application, it is seen as a soft inquiry. 
so it does not penalize you so you've got to minimize the amount of time you actually check for a credit check especially for credit purposes make sure that you only do it once i know people always worry about when they're trying to buy a house because whatever if you use the same offer to purchase it only counts as one credit check doesn't matter if it's all the banks but you can make it easy for yourself. There's a company called Mortgage Market. And basically, you put in one application, it goes to all the banks with the same report. So you don't have the different banks doing it all by their own phases or whatever. Now, the last one speaks to the story I started with. Guard your credit profile with your entire life. Remember, your credit profile basically is a way for you to be able to use credit to leverage or to leverage credit or leverage debt debt is not a bad thing it's important to know that what we don't have is enough credit education so people know how to use debt to be able to start building wealth that's where the biggest issue actually is debt is not the issue using credit is not an issue it's what are you using it for how are you using it for this is why it's so important to make sure that you guard your credit score your credit score is like a baby that you nurture and you take care of and once you do these things that I've just spoken about, it is easy. But guarding it also means that you've got to go to the likes of Experian, the likes of Kudo, the likes of ClearScore, the likes of TransUnion, and download your credit uh, report so that you can check for any inaccur inaccuracies. Your name, like for instance, when I used to pull mine, they used to call me Mr. Nicolette. I mean, hello, can I at least get the benefits of being a man? you know like a higher pay for the same job i mean but anyway let me not digress again it is important to make sure that you fix those little things so it's things like your your name your id number your addresses all those things make sure that they are actually perfectly done and then the second thing that you want to do is to make sure that if there is any identity theft where somebody is using your identity to open bank accounts, you dispute that immediately. How do you dispute it? You send a letter to the credit bureau and say, I would like to dispute one, two, three, four. They will tell you what are the steps to take for you to be able to dispute that listing on your credit report. This is absolutely important for you to be able to, main, um, to improve and to maintain your credit report when or credit score when i come back and circle back i will do how to build a credit score because i think that's one of the areas where a lot of people struggle because they can't reconcile taking up credit so that they can get credit so i'll be signing out and i'll see you guys on the next one Mwah. oh remember to close off your accounts when you are finished get your paid up later the only exception is the oldest account that you have that's the one you don't close off because also remember just like job experience, how long have you been in a job? If you don't close that first account that you got and you keep it open, but you maintain it, it looks like you have been in this credit game for a very long time. So, make sure. Mwah!